Welcome to Discovering. It's a rainy fall afternoon. Bird hunting in the rain? Absolutely. It's wet, so it keeps the dogs cool. The temperature's not up there. And we'll stop in at the MSU farm in Chatham for Agripalooza. The idea is that we educate grade school kids, anything resource related. Put your feet up and the remote down. It's Monday night and time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. Warm or cold, rain or shine. For many of us, fall is the best time to be in the outdoors here in the UP. Rough grouse, partridge, bird hunting, call it what you want. It's one of the best reasons to grab a shotgun, put on some orange, and head for the peace and quiet of the woods. I had the good fortune to tag along with Rick Loxinen and his dog Art on a warm, rainy fall afternoon in the UP woods. This is our fifth day out bird hunting. Uh, probably not the most ideal day. It's drizzling a bit, but the temperature's nice. And uh, so far this year, even on the sunny days, the birds have been sitting pretty tight. So I think we'll be able to find something, uh, whether that's with the dog or if it's something that's just coming out for a snack. So this is Art, five-year-old German short hair. Art is uh, my original hunting dog. I was put on active duty in 2014. The company I was working for at the time, uh, the boss of the company had a litter of short hairs and knew I was a hunter and actually gave me Art as a gift. And I hadn't been really bird hunting that much. I was just so busy with work and everything else that was going on with life as it is. So between getting quality bird dog and then moving to North Dakota and kind of brought back my love of bird hunting and there really isn't a better place to do it and now in the five years Art's been alive he's one of five dogs we have currently and he's one of seven total that we've been through we had one short hair get killed in a hunting accident last year and we ended up training one and selling it a couple of years ago. So we've got three short hairs of varying ages and two English cockers, which is kind of my favorite mix to run as far as pointing dogs and flushing dogs together. Art is a, he'll do just about everything between ducks, geese, and upland. The only thing he doesn't like doing is breaking ice in the fall, which I don't really like doing myself either. Art. And then, believe it or not, the cockers will all duck and goose hunt as well, depending on where we're at. We've got a nice mix of dogs that will go out any day of the week and do whatever you ask of them, which is kind of nice. There's one. Whoop, whoop. Whoa. you miss that one, buddy? Was it stuck in the brush?
this is kind of a hot spot normally because there's an, an old apple tree here that doesn't make very big apples. There's a couple of thorn apple trees stuck back in here and it's covered enough so they don't typically get very wet or cold. And then this whole side of the trail is all thimble berries. So there's food everywhere for them. You know, moving back to the UP, it's been interesting to, you know, everybody thinks their dog's the best and I have that same viewpoint. But it's been interesting to hear, you know, what everybody thinks is the most ideal bird dog or lots of people around here like to say grouse dogs. And I don't know that I've ever found the ideal bird dog or a grouse dog. I just like a good dog. One that likes to go out and work and is happy to snuggle up at home when they're done and isn't a bother. And all of our dogs are in the house and part of the family, which is, I think, makes a better dog overall too. In Art's short five years so far, he's probably had five, 6,000 birds shot over him. Got him. Fetch! Art! Art here! Art! Here! Art, come here! Art! Come here! Heel! Fetch! 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 <laughs> there you go! Good boy! Here! Here! Ah, 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 ah. Easy! Thank you. A nice bird, probably this year's. Well, it only took a few days of going out to get one bird. <laughs> Good boy, Art. This is another spot that there's usually birds because there's an apple tree here, there's thorn apples behind that apple tree, thorn apples here, and then it's a nice mix of edge cover and then in back into hardwoods. Come here. Art. I don't really mind being out when the weather's not ideal. This is kind of nice in that it's wet, so it keeps the dogs cool, the temperature's not up there. And for pointing dogs, the birds tend to sit a little bit tighter, so you don't get as many bumped birds, which is nice, because my, you know, these dogs, we've only been back for a year, so I still get some bumped birds here and there. But on a day like today, not many people want to be out in the woods and the birds certainly don't want to go anywhere. They don't have to, so. And it's nice for my dogs because I tend to run them a little bit closer than some people do as far as working rough grouse, but working tighter also gives me a close eye on them. I don't have to worry about them on a GPS or they all run beeper collars when they're in the woods like this, so it, I can hear the beeper collar just fine. And it generally makes for better shots if they do bump a bird or two. Will be, this is probably the most closed in area. This is one of our cuts that was done about five years ago. So it's still a little bit young. There's a fair amount of deer activity in here because it butts up to a pretty open area of the property. So you tend to find a lot of young deer in here early in the year. And they all come through here at some point during the day. This year has been kind of what I found last year in that birds seem to be sitting in the 
edges of different cover types. I haven't found a lot in popple stands or aspen stands. I found them more alongside the road sticking in the pines or sitting in thick bushes where there's lots of food and cover and the thorn apples or apple trees. Art, being probably my most experienced dog, spends most of his time going 40 or 50 yards on either side and he'll come right back into me and check in. And he does it very naturally. I didn't have to show him how to do that, but that's where I like him to be. I don't like dogs that get off too far in the woods because, you know, grouse, especially UP grouse, can be really jumpy. And even the best bird dog bumps birds. So when you're only getting a you know, a half a dozen decent shots off in a bird season to shoot at something. The more times you can get that, the more you appreciate. And of course, it works really nice for the dog too, because the more you get to shoot birds over them, the more excited they are to work and hunt. So typically I don't let any of my dogs get more than that, but generally they don't want to either. So a lot of Pierce will tell you that you can't hunt grouse without a double gun. And, uh, I would beg to differ. This is the gun that I use for everything. This is a uh, Beretta A400, and uh, I do duck and goose with it. I hunt quail with it, grouse, obviously, pheasant, uh, prairie partridge. Uh, it's an auto. It holds three shells for whatever you want to kill. It's durable. It's camouflage, and I have no complaints. The only time the gun's ever fouled up on me is when I pulled it apart and cleaned it. So I will never clean this gun ever again, and this is number three for me. One I lost to a hunting accident and the other one ended up in my dad's gun cabinet. So I have no complaints and uh, I will likely never hunt with a double gun because they're too pretty. <laughs> yep, we've been by apple trees and thorn apple trees for every bird that we've seen today. And the nice thing with apples and thorn apples is everything eats them. So there's a lot of people out there that say they manage for grouse or they manage for deer or they manage for these individual species. Well, really, if you manage for grouse, you manage for everything else because it's all the same food sources, berries, clover, apples and thorn apples. So if you spend your time at the bottom, you'll get to shoot what's at the top. Right here. Okay, okay, get him, Art, get him, Art. Get it. I don't think there's anything in here, buddy. I think it's gone. I think your friend's gone. It's gone. It's all gone. Spending four years in North Dakota with the dogs was really nice and we got a lot of great hunting and we killed thousands of birds out there. I was able to spend a lot of time working dogs there. You know, most of the time hunting, certainly we were out to, you know, fill our limit if we could with pheasant, but there's just such a vastly different experience for a bird dog when you have that many birds and you don't really have to show them anything. The dogs will pick everything up just hunting. So here are, you know, working with these dogs, we have to do a little bit more as far as structured training. And I've got a pigeon cage and we typically will raise some species of huntable bird. 
to put the dogs on before we get to this point in the season. This year we did quail. I, you know, I never had to worry about that in the Dakotas. Good boy, Art. Fetch, fetch. Good boy. Art here. Thank you. It's a nice big male. Number two. Good boy. There had to be something there. He spent too much time wandering around. Moving to North Dakota gives you a new perspective on hunting with a dog in the UP. It, you know, it wasn't uncommon for me to get off of work at three o'clock, bring one of the dogs with, and head out right after work and get home with a limit of pheasant or a limit of chucker. It's it's nice to have that amount of birds, but it makes you appreciate the one or two birds you get to shoot at or the one or two birds you get to see back in the UP. I mean, hunting with the dog here is just as much fun, but you appreciate hunting here a lot more than you appreciate hunting in the Dakotas or a place like that that's got thousands of birds at your beck and call at any given point of time. Each September, Marquette and Alger Conservation Districts host an event at the Michigan State University Extension Farm in Chatham, known as Agripalooza. We're visiting with fifth graders from all over the UP, and we're at the MSU Upper Peninsula Research and Extension Center. It's part of a statewide agricultural research system with Michigan State University. So this farm has been here since 1899, doing research and crop and livestock work of all kinds to service farmers in the Upper Peninsula. Help them figure out what works, what doesn't work, and look at new ways to, to do crop and livestock work. The day is geared towards getting fifth grade students engaged in conservation practices, healthy food choices, agriculture activities, as well as wildlife management and watershed health. I stopped in for a visit. This is, I think, the 10th annual Agripalooza. Um, Many, many years ago, um, each conservation district had its own little conservation fest. We'd have a forest farm and field day here at the farm for fifth graders, and Marquette had a conservation fest in Marquette. And nine, ten years ago, we decided to combine them and have one giant Agripalooza fest here. How many do you guys know what sea lamprey are? You guys do? You've seen them? Yeah? The idea is that we educate grade school kids anything resource related. We just try to cover 15 minute lessons of just about anything resource related that will thrill these kids and maybe leave them you know, with some kind of lesson at the end. This is a tag that's required by the state of Michigan. We've got um, uh, four of the five schools in Alger County and eight schools from Marquette County, Wells, Republic Michigami, we have Nagani, Sandy Knoll, Superior Hills, Father Marquette, teaching family yep. homes this year as well. It varies year to year, but we try to keep it under 400 so we all keep our sanity, um, but we want to make it a real circus out here. Okay, today we're at the, the MSU Extension Farm doing fire prevention for this. Um, today we're talking about different aspects of firefighting and why fire is good for the forest, for the blueberries, for agriculture, talking a little bit about farmers burning their fields to make their grass grow. Just basically fire prevention for the kids, get them, get them familiar with what we do at, with the Michigan DNR for firefighting in the, in the state of Michigan, and also talk to them about fire assignments that we go out west to help out the nation. Right now the nation's under a lot of fires out west, so basically just talking about fire prevention. Well, I'm here, um, I'm going to be talking to uh, kids about uh, different mammals that we have uh, here in the UP and going over some uh, skulls and furs and some adaptations and uh, track patterns and all kinds of uh, different, different interesting uh, facts about that. This is a member of the weasel family, good job. So Pine Martin, uh, Fisher is another one. We have a 15 minute program, so it's, uh, it's just a quick little uh, snippet of uh, some of that stuff. Does live in so this is a 4-H science activity. Um, we're using uh, heavy whipping cream to try to make butter. Um, so by shaking it to separate out the fat molecules from the buttermilk, um, just to show kids that 
science is quick and easy and can be really fun. I'm Jeffrey Smith, and I work 33 years for the National Park Service. I'm just trying to show uh, kids uh, basically how stream ecosystems work. Algae within the stream are food for what we call macro invertebrates, mayflies, stoneflies, casflies, those kind of things. You know, what those specific organisms eat. Just try to give them a basic food chain idea and uh, how streams work, which is not really obvious when you look at a stream. You kind of have to look under the surface to see what's going on. What I'm doing is trying to give these kids a little exposure to the science of agronomy, which is which is crop production, not horticultural crops, but the field crops, the grains, the forage and hay crops. Potatoes kind of fall into the agronomy world. And we talk about soil health. We talk about what types of crops fit here and are adapted to the Upper Peninsula environment and how farmers use them. Yeah, we're on behalf of Trout Unlimited talking to the kids here at Agripalooza. And we're talking about the fact that Trout Unlimited is not just for trout. What we really work on is cold, clean water, which affects everybody. So we're talking about the ecosystem and how cold, clean water affects everything and everyone and how everything ties together. And we talk about some of the projects we're working on, some of the important things that we do, some of the various types of projects and things we work on, different kinds of streams, different kinds of lakes. So we talk about some of the trout and salmon and things that, uh, that are around here. And then to give the kids a chance to actually practice with uh, one of the practice fly rods. So if they've never had a chance to fly fish, they can give it a try without, uh, without having to worry about hooks or anything like that. So just a fun day for the kids to come out and learn some things. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, take a drive to the Keweenaw and check out the Colors of Fall. And while you're there, check out the Calumet Keweenaw Sportsman Club's Gun and Knife Show in Calumet. The show starts at 4 on Friday and 9 on Saturday. Guns, knives, and good food. It's only five bucks to get in and kids 12 and under are free when accompanied by an adult. All proceeds from the event will be used to help out the supplemental deer feeding program. You can find more information at KeweenawSportsman.org. That's it for tonight. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.